Hi friends, Tiffany here. Welcome to My Quilting Life. So on July 1st of 2021, I shared a video of making this quilt, but in time lapse. It went super fast because that's what time lapse does, but you guys all got a kick out of it and the questions of how to make it kept pouring in. So in today's video, put your pajamas on, get comfy with me because I'm gonna show you how to make the Strings of Illusion quilt. Yep, everything we need to make today's quilt, the Strings of Illusion quilt. First thing you're gonna need, three and a half yards of a background or focus. Now, when I say background or focus, I'm talking about a solid, a blender, a polka dot, a stripe, something that's not in the other part of what we need, which is strings. What are strings? Well, strings are scrap pieces of fabric that are long like strings. I just so happen to have a full overflowing tote, tub, bucket, whatever you wanna call this, filled with strings. My strings are straight, but if yours are not, don't worry because trimming happens during this quilt. But my strings are all different widths and all different lengths of leftover pieces of fabric from my scraps, they're strings. So you need your pile of strings. When I say your focus or background fabric, in the quilt you saw previously, that is a teal. This one is aged to perfection, Maywood Studios. Now, this one I'm going to be using a, well, it's like a maroon, a dark maroon. We need three and a half yards of this. So when I say you need a focus print or background print, if you wanna use a polka dot, the strings that you use that are closest to the center of this cannot be polka dots, unless they're like say a black with white polka dot and your focus is a white with black polka dots. As long as your center focus or background print is not the same as your strings, but I highly, highly recommend you use a solid if you want, a blender, polka dot, or even a stripe because that would look awesome. And how many actual stripes do we have in our strings? I don't have a lot, like I just pulled one right here off the top, but I doubt there's that many more in here because I usually use those for binding. So I don't have much in my strings, but my strings are of all shapes, sizes, colors. There's some solids in here. I probably won't be using them in this quilt because I really don't like to put solids in a scrappy fabric quilt. This is all gonna be just the prints that are gonna be going into my quilt today. So three and a half yards of your background focus, whatever you wanna call it, three and a half yards of it, and then your pile of strings. And I'm gonna tell you right now, you need a lot of strings because these strings need to make 72 blocks. <laughs> So you need a lot of them and uh, the variation of them needs to be as wide as you can get it. But if you don't have strings, you can cut yourself a hundred, a <laughs> hundred, uh, one and a half inch strips if you want to. That's totally up to you. And you can, or go into your stash and just start cutting two one and a half inch strips off of every piece of yardage you have in your scraps. However you get your strings, you need strings. So I'm just giving you options here. Strings, you need all your strings. So we need three and a half yards and a ton of strings because the strings will also be being used in the border, which you saw in the quilt that I showed you in the beginning. So let's get to making the Strings of Illusion quilt. We are going to start off by cutting nine five inch strips and I'm gonna cut this piece first because it's, you know here 
my bolt seems to have, you know, got a little bit of a randomness to it. So I'm going to cut some five inch strips off here. We need nine five inch strips from our yardage. Now we are sub cutting to five inch squares. Cut all of them. Now that you have all of your squares, because we're only making 72 blocks, and let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna set aside our squares and we are going to pull out our strings. Here's the strings. We need 72 strings to start off with. It doesn't matter the width or anything because we are, everything gets trimmed in the end. So we need 72 pieces of fabric from this bin. Once you have your 72 pieces of fabric, what you need to do is lop off, cut off, <laughs> you like how I said that, five inches from all of them. So I'm gonna be stacking all of these just like this, piece after piece, so that I can cut off a five inch piece from all of these fabrics. I'm literally just stacking them and I'm just making sure that I'm only getting the one layer just like this, just making sure that they're all stacked. I just need one layer of all of these, just like this. And I'm gonna cut a five inch strip off of everything. So go ahead and stack your pieces up and get ready to cut. Okay, now that you have all 72 and your stack of five inch squares, we're gonna set that aside. And we're gonna put these on this side of my throat space and we are gonna run through. Each one of these is now five inches. We're just going to place it on one side of the square, just like this. And we're gonna sew them through with a quarter inch seam allowance. And I'm going to put through every single piece. So I am chain piecing all of my little five inch strings onto one side of my five inch square.
Okay, so this was 72 blocks right here. So 72 we started. Anyway, so we're going to take these over. I'm going to spare you that part. I'm just going to press everything away from the center. So I'm just going to go press all of these away from the center. So everything is going to get pressed back. And I'll meet you right back here for the next step. All right. All 72 blocks now have their first round on them. The next step is to grab 72 more fabrics. So we're going to come here to the bin and we are going to grab 72 more fabrics. All right, now that you have your 72 next different fabrics, and if you're using one and a half inch strips, just grab your you know, strips again if you want to, but we're gonna be mixing things up. So each individual piece is now gonna get its own matched piece. So we're gonna take one of these and we're going to just rough cut what piece goes on which thing. So we're just gonna take individual ones, put a fabric on the opposite side, rough cut it size like this, place it with it and stack it up. So once you've used it, you can put it in your big pile or little pile or whatever pile you wanna stick it in. So I'm gonna go ahead and just rough cut all of these and pair each piece up with another piece. So each piece is getting paired. The next step is to sew our pieces on. So right now they're just sitting on here right side up, but we're gonna put them the correct direction. So right sides together. I'm gonna line up one of the air sides and the other one is just gonna hang off and sew a quarter of an inch down. So line up the one side right here and sew a quarter quarter of an inch down. So it's going to hang off on one end because just a little bit, but we're going to be trimming things anyway. So again, right sides together. Sew it through. Next, we'll go right sides together and sew it through. And I will chain piece all 72 of these blocks. So chain piecing all of these together.
Okay, now from the back side of every block, we're going to trim away the excess. So on the side that we just added, there's going to be excess on the back. So now it's equal in size. Okay, so we just rough cut these. So I'm cutting from that first piece and everything is going to be cut to that first piece that we added size. So I'm just going to go through and trim away the excess on all of these and then I'm going to press them. So this is what I'm going to do and then I'll spare you the pressing. All right, the next step is to repeat the first two steps. So what we're going to do is take each block and I'm going to turn it this way right here. And I'm going to grab 72 fabrics and we're going to put them on each side. So now you can either make them exactly the right size or you can change the size up. So I'm just going to grab strips. I'm going on this side now. So the first piece we added, that is the side that we're going on. So again, now I'm going to cut them exactly the right size. And every single piece will have a different piece on it. I'm just going to stack them out of the way and continue on building on both sides until the block is roughly 10 and a half inches. It needs to be 10 and a half inches. So if the block is 11 inches, then that is okay. I'm just laying this here, grabbing the thing, cutting it to size. Each block, that's not even big enough. is going to be different, 100% different the whole way through. That one, pretty much the right size. So I'm just going to keep cutting these until they are all ready, and then I'm going to sew them. That one's exactly that size already. Look at that. I'm just going to keep grabbing. Trimming. Stacking. Until all of my blocks have a new side.
So I have lost my sound. So let's just make things up what I am saying here. <laughs> I have three rounds on one side and two on the other. So I need to add my third round on the opposite side. The goal here is to use as many fabrics as possible, but it seems I have lots and lots of repeats in all of my strings. So I'm going to start recycling through all of these strings so that way I can at least use them all up. The thing is, is I want to make sure that no block has two same fabrics in it. So I'm also going to be making sure of that as I recycle through. But the goal here is to get each block to 10 and a half inches. So the bigger these blocks get, the more you need to use a ruler or your cutting mat to be sure that each block is around 10 and a half inches. I will make mine just a little bit larger, but as you can see here, they are all different sizes at this point and there are different shapes too. Some of them are rectangles, so I need to build thicker pieces on one side instead of the other. So I'm going to use my cutting mat to where I get to 10 and a half or even 11 inches because I could always trim away as long as my pieces are 10 and a half inches. So I'm going to use this cutting mat as a goal, a guide, goal, guide, that's a word, <laughs> to get to my 10 and a half inches. So like this one is nine by seven. So I want to make sure I add more pieces on one side than the other, but equally going around. So if it needs one inch on one side and three inches on the other, then that's about the size of the strings I am looking for. As long as I'm equally going on both sides of the block to get to my 10 and a half inch goal. So as I'm, you know, measuring for the next piece, as long as I'm building it like a half of a log cabin, I should remember which side I am on. There's a straight side, and then there's a side with a seam. If the side with the seam is open, build on to that side. If there's a straight side, do not build on to that side unless you absolutely have to. But the goal here is to a 10 and a half inch block. I'm gonna go ahead now and put you in time lapse while I complete the next few steps.
Okay, here we are. The blocks are made. The string bin is not finished yet, so do not put it away because we still need strings from it. And we're going to be using the smaller pieces that I have right here. They're going to be cut down. And when I say they're going to be cut down, we're going to be trimming them for the border because we have a pieced piano key border. This is what a pieced piano key border looks like. I have some started already from a previous project and I decided, well, I might as well continue on using them. So all these little pieces that are left, we're going to be cutting down into five inch segments. And then we're going to be piecing them together and piecing them together and piecing them together. The thing is, I don't want to uh, skip that part. So I'm going to put that part into time lapse when I get to it. But first, we're just going to set this aside because now we need to work on the blocks. And this is the part that's going to take a bit. They are all more than 10 and a half inches at this point, or at least very close to it. And we're going to start by getting a square that at least has a 10 and a half inch line on it. And we're actually going to start by trimming off and straightening out the two edges on the side that our main fabric is on or our focus fabric or our blender fabric. Like I said, we're literally just cutting off a sliver because everything was pretty much lined up. So if you cut any of the maroon or your, your main fabric or your background fabric off, it's okay because we're just trimming it so that it's nice and straight. Now we're just going to line it up to 10 and a half inches and we're going to be trimming every single one of these blocks to 10 and a half inches, which is going to take some time because there is 72 blocks here that need to be trimmed. So we're going to go ahead and just start trimming all of these blocks to 10 and a half inches. Every single one of them should be over 10 and a half. So it should be pretty good. And don't forget, we're just cutting a sliver to straighten this out. As you can see, I'm barely taking anything off those sides, but when we flip it, then I will have some to take off. And some of these strings can be reused that are on the other side that I cut off because I used a pretty large piece to end it, to get it to 10 and a half inches in the first place. So some of those strings can be reused. So just know that you can reuse them if they're more than an inch. I don't want the ones that are not more than an inch. So I'm just trimming things up stacking them to the side, moving on to the next. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to put you in fast forward now while I trim all these, because guess what? This is going to take me a bit. I have no idea how this keeps happening. I have no sound again. It's because my uh, thing broke. My, uh, what is it called? My microphone plug-in, it actually broke. So here I am voicing over again because I realized that I have no sound. Anyway, all right, so we're gonna take our 
background fabric or our focal fabric or our three and a half yards of something that we got to go with our strings. And we are going to cut off three, that's three 16 and one half inch pieces. So we're going to cut three 16 and a half inch pieces. And I'm going to go ahead and straighten out the one side right here on the end first. And then I'm going to come over 16 and a half inches and make my cut. And I will do that two more times after that. It's taking me a second to do this. Hold on while we wait. We can listen to me voicing over this video sounding like a dummy. Just kidding. I'm messing around because I have to voice over this video where I was talking and have no idea what I was saying because I can't even barely hear it myself. That's how bad my thing got messed up. So three 16 and a half inch pieces. Here I am lining the end up again so that I can come over 16 and a half inches for the second time. That's right. Two out of three will be done in just a moment. Hang on while we make these cuts. Oh, I'm cracking myself up and I'm trying not to laugh out loud because I know that it's just going to make things worse and then I won't be able to stop laughing. All right, line it up again. Make one more 16 and a half inch cut. That's three 16 and a half inch cuts off of our background fabric or focus fabric, whatever you want to call it in the beginning. That's what we're cutting. But don't put it away yet because we're not done. I'm just setting those aside because our next cut is one. That's just one eight and a half inch strip. And my ruler is eight and a half inches. So I just need to line it up on the end and make one eight and a half inch cut. Eight and a half inch cut. And then we're going to sub cut. And since the eight and a half inch one is like right here on my cutting table, I'm going to sub cut that one first in a minute while I tend to put things away. I don't know what was taking me so long. I could have got this done faster. Anyways, so I'm going to straighten this lining up the salvages, cut those off, and then cut this to eight and a half inches. Just one eight and a half inch cut, making two pieces from that eight and a half inch cut. So I cut the salvage off first. This is folded in half, so I'm getting two cuts. There's two pieces here. Then I'm going to line my ruler up on the diagonal and I'm going to cut from corner to corner just once. That makes these strips with the out, the four, the out corners of it is straight a grain. Now I'm going to take that remaining piece and I'm going to cut a five inch strip off of it. Yep, that's right. We're going to cut a five inch strip off of that remaining piece because we need our four five inch squares that are going to go on our pieced piano key border. So I'm going to cut five inches and then I'm going to turn it to the side, line everything up nicely and sub cut two cuts off of here, giving me four because it's still folded in half. I will get four five inch squares from this cut. Okay. Yep. This has taken me a while because I'm probably explaining something <laughs> while I'm here. All right. There's my four five inch squares for our cornerstones for our border. Now we're going to take our big 16 and a half inch pieces and I'm going to actually stack all three of them up. So I'm just going to line up the salvages, straighten everything up, and I'm actually going to stack all of my three cuts up, giving me six layers of fabric. So you can see I'm just lining the salvage up and then I'm laying on top, making sure that the lines are straight on the top and the bottom. Everything is 100% aligned before I make any cuts. I want to make sure it's good. So I'm just straightening it up. There we go. Come on. You got it, Tiffany. You can do this. And so can you out there in the audience. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't make yourself laugh. This is serious. Come on now. All right, here we go. We're stacking the third one up here. And then we are going to cut off the selvage. Once everything's straight, look at that. Beautiful. We're going to cut that selvage off. Yep. I didn't bring over my left-handed ruler. Oh, so I'm going to cut it underneath myself because I can do that. And so can you if you try. All right. We're going to come lining this up on the beginning line of my cutting mat because that's the only way I'm going to get 16 and a half inches. And I'm going to come over 16 and a half inches making six 16 and a half inch squares out of this. So here we go. We're going to cut all six layers. Make sure you have a nice sharp blade to do that. I'm going to move those aside because I don't need that anymore. And then I'm going to turn this on the diagonal because I'm going to cut on both diagonals. So from one corner to the other, I'm going to make a cut. Yep. Come on, Tiffany. Stop talking. Make that cut. There we go. See, I don't know what she was saying here. I, I mean, me, you know, ha <laughs> ha. Yeah. And then we're going to cut on the diagonal from one corner to the other on the other side, giving us, I don't even know how many, because I can't do the math right now because I'm being too silly. This is the straight grain and this is the, the bias. So we want the straight grain on the outside because these blocks are being put on point. So these are our setting side triangles and these are our corner setting triangles or corner triangles or however you want to call it this they are on the bias what touches the blocks but the outer corners are straight grain that is what we need to put this together so yeah all of these outsides now the longer part of these triangles are all straight a grain. So we should have no stretching, tugging, or pulling on the outside of our quilt when it comes to being put together and having borders attached. So those are our five inch squares. We got four of them. Yep. Okay. I don't know what you're saying, Tiffany. <laughs> Set those aside because those are, those are whatever. And now we're going to take all of these pieces, except for those border corner triangles. We're going to take all these pieces over to the fabric room and lay this quilt out. How about that? Yay! Here we are on the design floor and we are going to lay this quilt out. This quilt is on point. So when I say on point, that is what we cut all these pieces to. That is because these blocks, instead of being in a square position like this, they will be in an on point position like this. So now it's time to lay them out. We're gonna be doing six blocks across by seven blocks down on point. So don't mind me in my pajamas still, getting things done. I'm comfy, you're comfy while watching. So why not? Let's get this laid out. So as you can see, it's kind of tight in here. It's time to lay down the corner, the side setting triangles. So the side setting triangles go in on the sides like this, all the way around. And this is what makes the rows when we are working with on point.
you will have two remaining side setting triangles. Just put those aside and use in a different project. And then we need our corner triangles. So I'm going to lay these in and then I'm going to show you what everything looks like and how we're going to make this rose. Because with on point quilts, the rows are different. Okay, with side setting triangles and everything on point and our corners where they're supposed to go, now is the time. If you want to move something around, move it, but I think there's great balance throughout this whole entire quilt. But what we're going to do is show you how the rows are put together. because they're not like other rows. All right. Here we go. So this is going to be the corner I start in. That's row one right there. This is row two right here. This piece will get hooked to this piece, which will get hooked to this piece. And then this one gets added on top. So that's row one. So I'm going to mark that row one. This here, here, there, there, and that piece will be row two. Then this row three. Then here row four. Then that row five. Then this one row six and that one ends with the corner setting triangle and then this one starts with the corner triangle which will be row seven and then this one's row eight row nine row ten row eleven twelve and that's the thirteenth piece so we're going to go ahead now and I'm going to mark all these and then pick them up in order so that we can put them together. So the rows are all stacked up here for me. I'm going to show you how to put like two rows together. The rest just kind of flows. So I'm going to move this stack out of the way and I'm going to go ahead and grab my first few pieces. Now, remember it's on point. So this piece is going to go here. That's going to go there. And this one is going to go here. And then I will attach this corner piece. So I'm going to start by putting this right sides together and I'm aligning this bottom straight edge right here and this side straight edge and there's going to be a lot that hangs over. I did that on purpose with the measurements. So we're going to go ahead once it's lined up and we're going to sew a quarter inch seam. Everything's nice and lined up. And I literally just sewed right off. So once I open it, it goes right here. And for now, I'm just going to finger press that out. And then this piece right here is going to go right on top, just like this. And again, I'm going to sew down this side. I'm lining up that bottom and the top is just going to hang over. And then 
we're going to bring it over here and I'm just going to finger press it away from the center. And then this is going to get lopped off. So I'm going to go ahead and even though it's just finger pressed, I'm just going to go do a, do this with it finger pressed only for now. I'm going to grab a ruler and I'm going to line it up with the corner of this block with the edge of the block right here. And I'm just going to take off this and that. Don't need those. That's garbage. And then we're going to take this corner piece here. And this is going to go right sides together right here. And it's going to touch end to end. It does not hang over. It's cut just like this because we're going to be trimming the whole quilt when we're finished. So now I'm going to sew here to there along this. Keeping everything nice and lined up. And then this is our first two rows done, just like this. So there, that's done. So now we just need to do, this is the top corner right here. Now we need to do the next row. So I'm going to grab those pieces right here, and it's going to start off with a corner setting triangle. And then the second piece goes in after that. So these will go right sides together, just like this, lining it up. And I'm going to sew down this edge. And then I'm going to finger press this away from that block. And just like any row now, now we're going to hook them together like this. So these two are going to go together. And none of the seams are going to match or nest because they are just wherever they landed when we pieced our blocks together with our strings. So I'm just making sure that every which way I pressed is always going in that direction. And then this one is going to go the opposite direction. So this one's now going this way. This first seam went to the right or to the left. Then this seam right here is going to the right. Then we're going to add this next one right here. And this one's going to go to the left once it's pressed. Just like that. So now I'm going to go ahead and press this one to the left. And then add the next piece, which is right here. So this is our setting triangle. It goes this direction. So I'm just going to lay it on top of here, right sides together. And I'm going to sew a quarter inch seam. And this one will go to the right. Just like that. Now we have these pieces hanging off. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to line the ruler up with the edge of the block. Cut that piece off. Come over here to this side. Line the ruler up with the edge of the block straight down. And cut this side off. Then. Once that's done, this 
will go on top of here. So now we're going to bring these right sides together. Now we're just going to be nesting these seams. So I'm going to throw some pins in here. So I'm just going to nest that junction and nest this junction right here. And they're pressed in opposite directions. And then I'm going to come over here and over here, line it up, and it should stick over a quarter of an inch. And this side should stick over a quarter of an inch also. Just like that. So now I'm going to take this to the machine. And so down here. And obviously I need to press, but that I'll do in a minute. I just wanted to show you how it goes together. But I usually press in between the rows. For now it's just finger press, but that's good enough for now. So I'm just making sure everything's staying lined up. I'm going to move my pin, make sure my seam is nested, and it is. And so off the end. All right, and then this is going to get pressed back like this. So when I go to press it with the iron, just like this, and I just realized I had two same colors next to each other, <laughs> everything's going to get pressed back just like that. So there is now the corner right here. So there is the corner already done. So now I'm just going to continue on making my rows. And then when I get down to row six, I think it is, that's when it's going to go the opposite direction. So I'll have my corner piece and no. So the next row, the corner setting triangles are going to be out here and you're going to line up your first block with this unit right here. Okay. Then your next block, next block, next block, next block, and then your corner corner setting, side setting triangles, sorry, will be on this end. So I'm just going to continue piecing these, but I'm going to put you in time lapse while I do, but this is how it's done. And you'll be able to see in the time lapse how I'm completing this without having to go keep laying it down on the floor. So I'm just going to keep my blocks right here and I'm going to go ahead and start pressing as I go. Thank you. 
Okay, so we are now going to connect our last and final seam. So what I did there on the end was I just connected the last three rows together to create this big corner piece. So that way, when it's right sides together on the side we need it on, I want to remind you that our pieces don't start at the beginning. They start on the ends of here. So your first nested seam is actually where two blocks meet up side to side, and this one is on the top. So we're gonna pin right sides together. Right here, I'm nesting this seam. I'm just gonna straighten that up to the top right there. I'm gonna put a couple pins in it. And this is a very rare occurrence for you guys to see here on Tiffany's Quilting Life, is the use of pins. But if I want something to lay flat and nice, and I'm taking all this time to do it, I might as well do it right. This quilt has taken about 16 hours so far to make, although you have only watched probably like maybe an hour and a half's worth so far. I'm not sure, but I'm taking the time to pin it because I took the time to piece it. So I know that sounds weird coming out of my mouth, but all right. I'm just gonna throw an extra pin right here. And that's this seam right here. And again, it's coming up on the end. So this is where two blocks meet here on this side. So it, two blocks will meet here, but the end meets up with this. Now I did when I, in, in the beginning, when I was first learning how to put things on point, I accidentally sewn them the wrong direction. And I looked at the quilt and I was like, wait, something's off. So you have to make sure that your final piece meets up with a block and not with the color because then it just hangs over. So you don't want that. You want to make sure that you got it right. I'm just going to throw another couple pins right here. And we're going to go ahead and start stitching the last and final seam. And that's just for this part. We have a border to make after this, my friends. But that is going to take us another few hours just in itself. Because there's a lot of pieces to sew together. But we're going to chain piece and, you know, the, the typical what we do here on my channel. So I'm just going to go ahead now, and I stitch a, one that's pinned. I tend to go pretty quick. I just straighten everything out. I'm making sure that the weight of the quilt is up here on the table. It's on the, it's, it's on the uh, diagonal, <laughs> so it's kind of like an awkward angle because we piece this whole thing together on point. So the quilt is sitting sort of funny. So it's wanting to yank in different ways that not normally happen when you piece a quilt top. So here we go, almost there. Making it through this. All right, just making sure everything's staying aligned. A lot of this now is bias. Well, not these pieces, but the the corners that connect all this right here is bias seams. So that first part was stretchy and that made everything else a little off. And that's where pinning comes in, keeping it nice. Oops, where am I grabbing? I'm grabbing the wrong area here. <laughs> and it landed perfectly because there's a straight at the ends here of every single row. Every time I attach it, there's the straight blocks are coming on these ends. So it actually helped it out a lot. But keeping it nice and square. And then underneath on the back side is the pieced ones that are going the opposite direction. So it really helps out with the keeping everything nice and square. All right, coming up on that very last bit. Literally almost done. 
All right, so there that is. All my pins are out. I'm just gonna go ahead and press this back, so towards this piece right here. And the reason for that is because all of my straight seams, that, or my straight pieces are right there, so it's gonna press nicely to that side, and then we need to trim the top. That's a challenge all on its own, so be right back. Okay, so here's the quilt top. And it's all pressed, but the first thing I need to do is remove all of the pins that told me which row everything was. So I don't need these in here anymore, and I'm tired of poking myself. So I'm just going to go ahead and pull all these out, and then we're going to trim this quilt very carefully like. This is why I like these little post-it notes from the dollar store. Even though I have to pin them in, I can just throw them away or reuse them if I have another quilt that has 13 rows. I tend to just throw them away though. And last one. Okay. So now to trim it. This quilt is quite large, so it's going to take a minute to trim. Now, as you can see right here, it's off, so it's about a quarter inch smaller. We, I could have, in the original pattern when I did this, I could have gone with a nine inch. So if you want to go nine inch, then you really won't have much trimming to do. But either way, we should trim it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and use quite large ruler here. I don't like that this one is not very see-through. Let me find a ruler that's got more see-through to it. Okay, we're going to go ahead and use this one because I can see through the darkness. All right, and what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be lining up a half an inch from every single one of these points. So this outside point here, right here, right here, right there, I have made this pattern big enough to be able to be trimmed a half an inch away from the points. So I'm going to go ahead and line this up, and I'm going to put my half an inch mark here. I'm going to line this edge up right here. It would be best if I had two up here, so it makes it just a little bit easier. Half an inch here, half an inch there, and a straight line right here. And I'm going to go ahead. and trim just like that. Then we're going to adjust it. We're going to line up that next half inch mark right here on this corner. I'm going to reline back up this one right here. And where are we at? Right here. Can't see it. Right there. There it is. Right there. There it is. I'm going to hold it in place. Trim it, reline it back up because I'm making a mess here. Trim it a half an inch away from all these points. So I'm just going to line up the previous point right here, half an inch mark, line up this one right there. And in some places, you'll barely be trimming anything off. So I'm going to go ahead and continue on straightening this out. And last slide. So it's nice and straight here. It's nice and straight right there and there. And this is how it ends. Look at that. Perfect. So here's my quilt top. 
all this wrinkling it up needs to be pressed. But that's it for now. And we're going to work on the border in just a second. Okay, now it's time to make our borders. The borders are made from five inch strips sewn together into one really, really, really long piano key border. Scrappy piano key border. <laughs> so to do that, well, if I can just get this to lay, because we're going to be adding to this, I'm just going to make it super humongous long, because if I have leftovers, they can go back in the bin for next time I need a scrappy piano key border. But to do it, I need to take all these pieces here and cut them to five inch increments. So what I'll do is some of these have selvage on them. So I'll cut that off and then I will cut the opposite side. Obviously that's not five inches and that's garbage. There's a five inch strip right there. Then I'll take another one and line up the ruler and go, oh, hey, look, that's five inches. That'll go in this pile and this one will go in that pile because it's not big enough. This we can cut right here, trim off the end so that it's nice and straight. And there's one. And this one looks big enough to get two. And it is. So I will sit here and literally <laughs> trim every single one of these. And there's also a trick that you'll see, because I'm going to put you in time lapse while I do this in a minute. I have a little trick of stacking them all and then cutting them. So like I'll get all this. Oh, that's not five inches. So that'll go in that pile. Um, I will stack them all really nicely like this, all on one side, lining them up on the lines of my cutting board like this. So I just using the lines on the cutting board and lining everything up and just keep going and going and going until I have a ton of pieces lined up just like this. And I'm using the lines on the cutting board. As you can see on the ones that I'm like laying over each other, I'm using a separate line to do that so that I'm watching it. So this one's like on a quarter line. And this one's on a quarter line. So I just continue stacking them up until I have a nice big stack. And then I'll come in here, make all the beginnings the same. I just knocked it sideways, go figure. I make them all the exact same like this. Reline that ruler up like this and then cut. And now you can see most of these will not have five inches on them. So these I will just put in my knot pile and all this will go in the right size pile. And that's how I get all of my strips. So I'm gonna go ahead because it's gonna take me a while to stack and cut, stack and cut. And I'm gonna go ahead and get it all situated and start sewing.
Now that we have this big, huge stack, it's time to chain piece all of it through. So we just take two pieces, right sides together. They're exactly all five inches, so they should meet up. And then what we do is sew two together, sew two together, sew two together, sew two together. And once all they're sewn together in twos, then we will turn it into fours and so on and so forth. And that is how this will grow quickly with all of these pieces. So as soon as I get all of these sewn, I will come back to the beginning, disconnect it, hook two to four to six and so on, or eight, you know what I mean. And then I will have a really, really, really long row of piano key border. So I'm just going to continue piecing these through and then I will switch it up and go with more and then and there are repeats in here which is fine by me because it's all going to get mixed up anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and throw it back into time lapse while I sew all this up. Okay, so we have our quilt top. It's ready for our border. And we have our giant roll of five inch strips. This part is quite easy, but 
I'm going to put you in fast forward while I sew on the two sides of the quilt first, and then I'll show you how to put the cornerstones on without having to measure this to be the exact size because we're going to sew it on to the exact size. So let's go to the sewing machine and we're going to stitch this on two sides and then I'll come back after that little fast forward part and then show you how to do the cornerstones. Okay, so the sides are on and pressed. Now to add cornerstones onto here without having to measure anything exactly. So we're gonna take the end right here of our roll that I made. You don't have to roll yours like I did. And we're gonna take a cornerstone. We have four of them. That's what these four pieces that we cut off of that, um, eight and a half inch strip. This was the cuts we made off of it. I'm gonna take one for now and I'm gonna right side it together with my long strip of five inch pieces. I'm gonna line that up to the end of it and I'm gonna sew it on. All right, once that is on, you can finger press it towards whatever side you want. I've been pushing everything towards my strip here. What we're gonna do, is untangle ourselves here, is put this right sides together and align the cornerstone up with the end, nesting that first seam. So the seam goes out because I press towards the border and this one goes towards the border and they nest right up. I'm gonna line that up, hold my seam Backstitch at the start, come down to it, and then start aligning everything again. So I'm just going to unroll my roll a little bit like this, lay it back next to me, and I'm going to sew down this top or side, whatever you want it to be, but this is the top. And when I get to the other end, I'll show you how I attach a cornerstone there without having to measure the size. Okay. Right about here is, I don't know, about 10 or 11 inches from the edge. And what we need to do now is just backstitch, break thread. And what we're gonna do is right here at our table, the same procedure we always do with trimming off the end, except a, just a smidge different. So what we're gonna do is come down, keeping our border nice and flat. And what we're gonna do is right before this ends and this begins, we need to insert a cornerstone. But what we need to do is cut this a quarter of an inch away from the quilt top before the border, away from the border. So what I mean by that is we're gonna just fold it on top of itself and I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna match this final piece to the border piece or to the quilt top right here. Sorry, I cannot talk today. So to this part of the quilt top is how far I'm coming out with this one. So if it ends on a seam, you can go ahead and just rip that seam. So I'm gonna go ahead right here and just rip this seam out because it does land on a seam. So I'll get this unstitched real quick. There's that. And what we're gonna do 
is this is beyond a quarter inch. I actually just want to cut that quarter inch seam off because if you look at this, it's a half an inch further. So we're going to go ahead and I'm just going to cut on that seam line that I just unpicked. Literally, very carefully, nice and straight, right there. And now when I lay it out, it should stick out a quarter of an inch right here beyond that. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take our cornerstone now. All right, here's the cornerstone. We're going to flip this up, put the cornerstone on right sides together, just like this. We're going to stitch that on. You have plenty of room to do so. Oh, it would help if I was threaded. <laughs> All right, here we go. Right here. Now it should be exactly the same size as the top. So all I'm gonna do is nest this seam together right here. So you can see there's this one's going down and this one's automatically wanting to go towards that pieced border. I'm gonna come back where I started or end it off, give it a little back stitch, and continue on sewing this the rest of the way. And then lining my end up, which it should be perfectly lined up right here. Back stitch at the end, and there is our cornerstone without having to get up or measure anything to be the exact same size. So we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna repeat with the other side real quick and show you one more time. All right, here's our start again. And then we have this piece right here that we unpicked. So there's our start here. We're gonna grab one of the two remaining cornerstones. We're gonna place it on here. And we're gonna stitch it on first. Just gonna unroll a little bit of this so that I have room. Okay, and you can go ahead and finger press it again towards whatever side you press your um, board, strip, you know, piano key border. So I pressed mine towards the border, not towards the quilt top. So I'm pressing this towards the border, not the quilt top color. I'm gonna line up the ends again. I'm gonna start the back stitch. I'm gonna nest that seam. It should be perfectly lined up because our border. Our piano key border is five inches. I'm gonna stitch down just a little bit and then I'm gonna adjust, unroll my roll. And look, I have so much extra left of this. There'll be plenty for this side and towards another quilt. So I'm just gonna straighten it up and continue on and I'll meet you at the other end of this. All right, here we are. I stopped about 10 inches again. So I stopped about 10 inches away. The same thing. So what we're gonna do is flatten it out Flatten it out just like this. And we're going to come a quarter inch beyond the quilt top or the pieced top and not the border. So beyond the top, or if you look at it from the back side, it would be with the equal of the top because the top is pressed out. If it was pressed in, you would still have to measure a quarter inch away. If you want to be more accurate, you could always use a ruler but I just fold it back like this. This is what I've always done. And I'm gonna line it a quarter inch away right here from the edge, quarter inch away, just like this. And then I'm gonna make my cut. And I got lucky that it's not on a seam again. I'm creating my own seam. So there it is, a quarter inch away. We're gonna grab that remaining cornerstone and just because I have more room now, I'm gonna roll my roll 
back up and out of the way. So you could see I made a lot and I started with quite a bit too. So I had plenty of random strips that went into this quilt top. So I'm just going to toss that out of the way. We're going to take this final cornerstone, fold this back, right sides together, and we're going to stitch that on there. All right, and then I'm going to line it back up about an inch above where I ended, back stitch. I'm going to come right here and I'm going to nest this seam just like this. I'm going to hold it in place. It's perfect. It's matched exactly to size. Holding it in place. And uh, I can't sew a straight line, but we're going to pretend I can. All right. And then I got the end matched up right here. Everything's perfect. Back stitch. And there is another nested cornerstone. So now I'm actually going to press this and then I'm going to do a stay stitch all the way around the edge, which is just a stitch that's an eighth of an inch away from the edge all the way around the whole entire quilt top because I don't know when I'm going to be able to quilt this and I don't want any of these seams opening up. I mean, they're, they're pretty tacked down, but I don't want anything opening up. So I will be right back to reveal the final quilt top. So here is the original one more time. This is how I started with a video over a year ago, right here. Now let's see the one, the quilt top, that I made in today's video. And here it is. The Strings of Illusion quilt is done. This quilt top measures 94 by 106, so it's perfect for a king size bed, but even better on a queen size because it hangs over quite a bit. So this is it, Strings of Illusion. So I'll let you take a look see at it this is before quilting because obviously i still need to do that step but right now i don't want it so <laughs> this is what you get is a finished quilt top for today's video so take a look enjoy and yeah have fun making your own strings of illusion quilt So, which one did you like better? The maroon version or the turquoise version? Let me know in the comments below. Also, check out the video right here on the screen. That's going to take you to watch the time lapse of the green turquoise version. I don't know why I said green. It's turquoise. That's blue and green together. And then below that, check out a playlist of all the quilts that I have designed. And don't forget to subscribe right here. Thank you, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!